Gabe Benedetti is a national political reporter for Politico, and he joins us now via Skype. All right, Gabe, so Speaker Paul Ryan came out and said he was encouraged by the CBO report. So talk about the argument the Speaker is making and some of the positives that we've seen in the analysis. Yeah, well, basically what he's saying is, you know, it's not a surprise that it says that so many people will be uninsured, but that's not what we're really talking about. What we're talking about is savings. And of course, it does talk, the CBO report does talk a lot about savings. So what he's trying to say is that he disagrees with the report. Of course, they're going to say they disagree with it. But basically that what their goal here is, is to overall cut the cost of health care in the country overall. And he's just trying to steer the conversation away from the number of people, the overall number of people who will be uninsured. So the White House says that it's in sell mode on this bill. The president is heading to a rally in Nashville uh, this week. There's another one in Kentucky next week. The big question, though, is how effective can these events be when it comes to gathering support for the bill in Congress? I know we've certainly heard from people at a lot of these town hall meetings, and they're very outspoken about the uh, possibility of replacing Obamacare. But can this have a, a, an impact on lawmakers? Well, obviously, the goal here is to try and win over Republican uh, voters or Republican leaning voters in these places in order to pressure the lawmakers themselves. You know, what the White House is trying to do right now is to win over conservatives in particular. There are uh, members of the Republican Party in the House and some in the Senate who are basically saying they're not going to touch this bill. It's not right for their constituents uh, and it's not right for them. And what you're seeing with the White House going in sell mode here is they're going to red states. They're not going into blue America to try and win over Democrats. They know the Democrats are not going to be with them on this. So what they're trying to do is just try to make sure that they have enough numbers just within Republicans on the House and on the Senate side to be able to even move this thing forward. Gabe, House Speaker Paul Ryan joked with our John Dickerson on Sunday that President Trump's tweets about wiretapping weren't really part of the health care marketing campaign. So how much is that controversy distracting from this push on health care? It's a big distraction. You know, it's yet another thing that Democrats are going to want to talk about. Democrats are basically saying, listen, you need to talk about health care. You need to talk about wiretapping. You can't pretend that both of these two things aren't happening. We can we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And frankly, a lot of Democratic leaders on the Hill uh, get pretty frustrated when Republicans try to do what Paul Ryan uh, did there. Of course, Republicans are basically saying, come on, this wiretapping thing is something that the president talked about. It's not going to be our focus here. But Democrats are going out of their way to say, listen, whether you like it or not, you own the president's rhetoric. Uh, he talked about wiretapping. He asked for a congressional investigation. You said you were going to do it. You can't just walk away from that. And Gabe, for the first time, we sort of heard Sean Spicer yesterday try to walk back the president's allegations. Um, let's, let's listen to how he characterized them, and then we can talk about it afterwards. He doesn't really think that President Obama went up and tapped his phone personally. The president used the word wiretap, in quotes, to mean broadly surveillance and other activities uh, during that. Okay, Gabe, this is something that's come up before. Uh, do we take the president literally or not? So it, uh, he's suggesting perhaps not literally. Um, so uh, what do you make of Spicer's response? Well, it's a walk back. I mean, that much is clear. He did. Spicer did say you can take the president seriously as long as he's not joking. Uh, of course, the question is, when do we know that? He's joking. Right. Uh, but but the question here, of course, is what you were looking at is Spicer basically trying to make this vaguer, because the reality is if there's going to be a congressional investigation into these claims, something specific will come out or will not come out. And if he is able to successfully retroactively make it seem as if the president was simply saying that there was surveillance surrounding him, there's a much bigger chance that there was some sort of surveillance in a scheme in which he was a part not necessarily, you know, wiretapping personally ordered by Barack Obama. Gabe, uh, there are analysis, uh, analysis, there is, there has been some analysis on this particular subject that suggests that because obviously this came from the president of the United States, this will stick. This has some traction, even if the Congress comes back and says, or the Department of Justice or the FBI comes back and says, look, uh, we found no evidence of this. And I wonder, because we've heard a lot of President Trump's surrogates on television um, and in print saying that what the president was alleging was supported by what was reported for example, in mainstream news outlets like the New York Times and the BBC. What are they talking about when they say that? And is there any validity to it? Well, what they're talking about is something slightly different, whether or not the White House wants to admit that. What a lot of them are pointing to are reports that conversations that members of the Trump team had 
uh, were recorded or were somehow listened in on because there were conversations with people who were under surveillance. That's fundamentally different from uh, the, the claim that, for example, a former president personally ordered a wiretap on Trump Tower in order to intercept the communications of now President Trump. But what we're trying to see here is, again, a broadening of the conversation. They are trying to steer this away from simply a situation in which they can claim, you know, uh, President Trump was personally wiretapped. If they successfully make it so that what they're saying is President Trump was uh, subject to communications in which they were maybe overheard by someone somewhere, uh, it's much easier for them to make that case. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Politico's Gabe DiBenedetti, thank you so much. Thank you.